we're back again trying to explain to you how to use a uh, quest adventure and event cards so that you can kind of um, start your game and have a bit of fun these cards are kind of used for every kind of game the only one that's missing from this is the Cost. challenge card so that, that's not included in this one here but this is because we're currently playing um, a different kind of game so we just thought we'd show you how this works yeah so the campaign cards are similar size than bigger ones but you use them for campaign games and all the other games unless um unless it's pure objective game or a campaign you're probably gonna want to use those three different stacks of cards these three stacks of cards so uh, yeah, so we're just going to kind of show you what they are. So I'm looking first at the beginning of a round of um, the game. You'll be picking up a quest card, which um, the best way to explain it is it gives you... You have to... Each player picks three of these cards at the beginning of um, the whole game. So before the rounds and that take place so that you can try and, and use these quests or complete these quests throughout the game. So because you'll have three different types, you'll have three different quests, and then you'll earn different um, victory points accordingly. So for this one, which is defeat them, it says when two enemy models are removed from play in the same round, score two victory points and discard this card. So I'll obviously try and do this on my round, and I might have another one, which I'll give you a good example. One of my other ones will be find the lair. Which means, um, you know, I'm going to be trying to uh, to get into Julia's space to also earn victory points in my game. So, um, so yeah, and you have that in however many rounds that you have. And then once you discard one of them, you can replace it with another card and um, to continue your quest throughout the game. And obviously, the more that you do, the more victory points that you'll get. But equally, if you don't use them, it's not the end of the world. This is just to help you earn extra victory points. So yeah, those... and um. So you draw three, but and then you look through all of them, and you you have the whole game, so all of your rounds to complete any of them. You don't have to complete any, but um, once you've completed one, you exchange it for another one, and you can do that up to six times per game. And also, if for the first time when you draw them, uh, you can exchange one of them for another one. But you can only exchange up to six times in a whole game. No, that is no. Oh, I sorry. mean, uh, that is only when you complete it. Then you exchange them again up oh, okay. to six times. I mean, the first time you draw them, you can if you don't like one of them, you can exchange it for another one from the pile. But that's it. Then you're not allowed to exchange anymore. Yeah, and you can't go back to the one that you discarded. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is uh, they called adventure cards, right? Adventure. Yeah. The second one. Yeah. yeah. So these ones you choose at the beginning of each round. So you have um, the rules being, in this case, whoever is the person who um, is not... <laughs> the, what, what's the word for it? The thing is, like, it's, it's pretty arbitrary who draws them. It doesn't really matter because you will always draw the top three. So it doesn't matter who draws them, really. But the person the, who draws... The only thing that yeah. matters is how they get used. So the person who doesn't have the initiative, so the second player to activate a model, is the one who gets to pick the first card. Yeah. And that card only counts for that model to be used. And, and only in that used. round. Yeah. So, so every round that you play, so in this case, we're currently playing a four-round game. In every round, we have to try and use these cards. We say have to. I mean, the idea is to try and use them, and they seem quite helpful to help you do stuff and move further across the board yeah. in quicker time. But it might be that um, that they aren't relevant and they don't count in that particular round. So to give you an example, this one says you get um, one defense against an unforgivable curse or spell. So let's say... Um, I don't know, like, uh, I've got um, the Death Eaters on my side and I'm going to cast a spell on Julia that would potentially kill her. She um, would have to roll the die to try and defend herself, but she'd have an automatic additional plus one to try and help save her. So, um, so she, you know, if she was the second person anyway, she could choose that card um, to use um, it. And then um, it just goes round, uh, it goes activation by activation 
So then, uh, let's so then the next one would be one. my player, whoever my player is, and then Julia would get that third one again, so she would get the, to choose that for yeah. the next one. So basically, it's an extra sort of balancing out um, of the power because the person, the person who has the initiative, can sort of act first and uh, cast the cast the spell first or whatever, but then. The person with the who doesn't have the initiative actually gets two of those cards instead of one because it goes you know I yeah. get one you get one I get one yeah so, so it kind of helps it helpful. balance it out which which yeah seems quite helpful yeah. and also um, sometimes those cards will not be applicable for the game you're playing at the moment so you'll have to see for example we are not allowed to put any more models, like summon any more models for this game onto the board. So if one of Because that's cards because of that, the rules of the game. It's the, the rules yeah, of the game yeah. say that. So because the rules of the main game that we're playing say that, when the cards tell you to do something like add, I don't know, Hagrid is uh, bringing a fantastic beast or whatever, and you have to try and challenge him or put him on the board, it's not relevant because the game says that's not part of this game. So you have to remove those cards and then just pick the next one and hopefully it will be relevant again. But as a team, look at them together at the beginning of the round, right? Sorry? No, I saying at the beginning of each game, both players yes. will look at them and decide whether or not that's applicable. Exactly, yeah. And if it, it, it's really just about the rules. So um, if something isn't applicable, then you then you take it out but if it's just a card that you don't feel like using or that's not realistic to do within that time you still keep it because technically you could have still used it yeah okay so those are the adventure ones and then the final one that we have that's applicable that seems to be applicable in all games is the event card an event card can only be used once you decide who the player is that you're going to use first. So the person who has the initiative has to nominate their person. So and per round as well. Yeah. So this is per round. So at the beginning of each round, but the person has to first nominate who their player is. So maybe Julia will say, okay, well, I'm going to move Hermione first. And the reason you do that is because Hermione has to then action this or try and start this off, and it technically is her card. Um. So yeah. So in this case we're doing a dark presence. So for this card, it's it's giving you an additional objective on the game that allows you to kind of spice things up in certain ways. So for this one, it's saying paste an objective marker. So in mine, I'm just going to use a different, I mean, I've got additional markers, but it's not really, it could really be anything that you're putting on the board. It's just so that you can distinguish it from your other objection, uh, objective markers. You could use the Patronus ones or something that you're not using very often. So in this case, I was going to use um, someone from the swarm. And then this card is telling us to put this somewhere on the board, or for Julia, her character Hermione, to put it somewhere on the board where um, there's at least three spaces where no one is occupying the space. But every time someone gets into that space, if they want to have an advanced um, action, they need to pay from their power pool, from these po uh, their power pool, they have to pay and um, two of their points, which means that some, you know, they, they're, let's say they're trying to cast a spell while they're there, it could be that they end up paying, you know, five of their power points to even cast a spell. So that's, um, you know, kind of just a bit that's um, hindering people. But it, but then once that's placed, everyone is affected by it. So even if Julia's characters go near it, she will also be affected by it um, and myself. So um, it says in this case, the marker remains in play um, until the end of the game, even though this event card is normally only for the round. So that's why it specifies that please controlling, uh, yeah, con continue drawing event cards as normal, but that dark presence will basically stay in the game um, for the rest of the game. So yeah. Yeah, and so uh, these are really just cool things that, that give the game a bit of extra spice and sort of make you think about other approaches of playing your team, which is quite cool. And it makes it quite a bit more unpredictable than it would be otherwise. Yeah, so I'd say the only thing to, to really keep an eye on is probably these quest cards. Because you can almost forget that you have them because they're sitting next to all of your other cards, you know, on the board. And you're not paying attention all the time. So I'd say when you're busy um, replenishing everyone in, um, in the magic phase at the beginning, before the initiate phase, um, when you're going through that, you... I would say go through your cards again, make sure that you're trying to 
to actually perform the quest just to give yourself some extra points because that is the point of it. Um, so yeah, so we hope that you like this and that you find it helpful and uh, we'll carry on sharing some stuff soon. Bye! If you liked our videos uh, with this explanation, take a look at some of our how-to videos and things to consider when playing your Harry Potter miniatures adventure game by Knight's Models.